we're going to take a look at TurboCAD Mac 12 today. Um, I just opened this application up for the first time, so we're going to start investigating it. Um, one of the first things I see when we open the graphic user interface or the GUI here, um, very similar to many CAD programs, you see there's an origin um, or our axes and our origin automatically displaying. Across the top we have our menu bar, um, which is similar to all applications. And down the left hand side um, we have this um, toolbar um, which has a 2D and 3D mode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch that right away to 2D just to get started. So I just click on this little 3D. Are you sure you want to switch to 2D? Yes. And that drops out all of our uh, 3D modeling functions which we're not going to be looking at yet. Primitives so on and so forth. <clears throat> so we'll drop to 2D and when you look then that gives us a lot fewer or many fewer options on the toolbar um, as to not confuse things. Um, when you look at all these tools important note similar to like the Adobe Suite or a lot of other programs is these little arrows down here um, signify that other tools are hidden under those tools so if you click and hold, you'll notice, for instance, this point tool. If I just hover while holding, it says point, points along a curve, and then points along a surface. It's interesting um, that this is in the 2D mode, but I guess you could have a surface in 2D and then expand that to 3D. Anyway, so important note that you have other tools hidden under here. For example, line, we have single line, multi-line, midpoint, Parallel, which is very beneficial, double, construction, fit, and perpendicular. And then under here, probably circle center point, yeah, circle two point, three point, tangent circle. So a lot of those tools are hidden under that. Across the top, um, you'll find very similar options that you would find in any program. File new, open, close, etc, etc, etc. Edit, copies, paste, so on and so forth. Um, nothing extreme in here. View. Um, a lot of your view options are going to be beneficial when you're first getting started. If you get lost where you've zoomed out completely um, and don't really know where your drawing went, you have zoom home, which is a hotkey command six, zoom window, zoom all, command F, um, and then just zoom in and zoom out, which would be your command plus, command minus. I find the zoom home is beneficial for people when they first start. And for instance, they have um, a drawing created. Let's just say you have a line drawn there and you zoom and you zoom and you zoom and it's gone and it's off the screen. You don't know where it went. Um, a lot of people get confused like this right away where where did everything go so we have our view zoom home which will bring us back to like that default zoom you want to call it or um, just back to the home so that's under view work plane um, we can toggle grid on and off um, so command G for grid we can also go to our grid settings so if you take a look here, default on the distance of X and distance of Y is 0 0.250, quarter inch. Um, it looks like there's different grid settings we can play here with rectangular grids, um, polar grid, depending what style drawing you're doing. So that's under the work plane. Draw, you can also come up through here. This is kind of like uh, a lot of software packages have frequently used drawing commands over here in the toolbar but they are also going to be located under the draw command and you may also find that some less frequently used commands that aren't shown in the toolbar may be here all right um, so for instance like if you're working on architectural stuff um, I haven't played with this program yet for architecture but um, we can go into walls, windows, doors, which are shown in this menu. I'm not really sure if they're shown over in the toolbar. So pretty cool where um, you can actually do some architectural drawing in here as well. 
modify. So if we're looking to do some of our transformations, such as translating, um, I'm sure they have polar translation, uh, rotation, scaling, mirroring, um, duplicating, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all beneficial, simple CAD commands um, as you move through. Trimming, so as we're working to trim stuff, um, we can do that through the modify. Uh, not sure if there's hotkeys for these yet, but simple trimming. Fillets, all right, so they have fillets and chamfers hidden under the modify. Um, probably going to drop two lines for a fillet. I'm sorry, so if you have two lines drawn, um, fillet two lines, one, two, and it drops your fillet. All right, same thing would apply if you had um, you know, a chamfer that you wanted to place. We'll just throw some. Modify, I'm oh, sorry, draw, and, um, yeah, no, modify, I was right. And we can go to fillet and chamfer two lines, chamfer angle, whichever, one, two, and I'm sure we can modify these as well. Here's your length of your chamfer, so, um, yeah, pretty simple up in, up in there. Um, verify, this would be for confirming certain things. So if you look, you can verify a distance point to point um, where you could click, click and get a distance for verification. It's almost like a measurement tool. Um, you could do a perimeter and area, uh, so on and so forth. Window, so window is going to toggle on and off certain options. Um, if you look, attributes, build of materials, Woodworking option, which I found is pretty cool just in first glance here. Um, being a woodworker, I mean, it's kind of neat to have these options available to you that most CAD programs don't have. So, for instance, I could drop a rabbit joint. Um, looks like they have dado, miters, dovetails, tongue and groove. Um, many times in CAD programs, we're just calling out notations on these where they actually have these joints built in. So those are under the window tools. Um, and that's the first glance of the graphic user interface of the program. Um, you'll find that um, as I move around up here, they have you know some some callouts as to what the actual um, tool does. But then they'll also, as I move around the user interface, here are my x and y coordinates as I'm toggled into 2D mode. As we see, I just simply have x y. Um, I'm sure if I were to rotate to 3D. It now adds in the Z dimension. So, like I said, we'll stay in the 2D and just play with these uh, X and Y coordinates as we start drawing some simple stuff um, inside of this program.